Hello? Yes. We're calling Call me in your order so you can, your conversation would probably get recorded over bars because we're closer to the camera. Um, we are being recorded, um, not live, but you can, if you're watching us, it's at some later date. Um, and there, uh, Jesse Adams is not able to make it today, but Councilor Klein is here, and I'm Paul Spector, the chair of the committee, so we have a quorum. The first order of business is approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. Uh, move to approve. And I will second, and all in favor. Aye. Aye. And um, the second piece is a, a reconsideration. This is a continuation of the discussion. We actually voted on this already in City Council on the taking of Center Court. And so that appeared because we continued that. It, it's kind of, unless you, you may have something more to say on it, but it was, it was continued because it was already on the agenda in the last meeting as something to continue to discuss. Um, we already took a vote on it in city council. If you have any more to add to that or want to say about that, that would be fine. Well, the first thing I want to ask is do we want to do public comment now before we get into the agenda? Or, because I think so, both of these folks are here about the Florence beautification. Yeah, and but what generally I do is you can, um, I, I thought that was the case, and so sorry about that, but when we come to that agenda item, you, you're welcome to just join right into the conversation. That's a right. more formal way. Can we maybe move it yeah. up in the agenda? Sure. So that these guys we'll move it to the next item. The other details. Um, um, so reconsideration of the taking of center court. Do you have anything more to add? So I guess there were just some questions at the last meeting about what the next steps are. And I was hoping that Mr. Huntley would be here, Director Huntley would be here to just give us kind of an overview again. Do you mean from the meeting? Because this, this was forwarded before the council took right. its vote, and then the council took its vote. So when it was forwarded, we, I think, assumed there was still not going to be a vote on the council. That was my recollection. Well, I did take the question forward to the mayor and to Director Huntley, and the way that I understand it now is that the Department of Public Works is doing a survey and creating some kind of guidelines for how the taking can happen. Uh, my question still remains though, is this something that we as a council will need to vote on again? Do we as a committee need to make a recommendation to the council once we get the plans from the Department of Public Works? But that's why I was hoping for some clarification today. Generally, I will, I will clarify that in my experience Mike, you can chime in here. In my experience, once we vote on this, we do not vote again on the actual, it goes back to the whatever the department is. We don't tend to vote then on the details of whatever we've initiated and voted on, but I will clarify that. The, the issue being, though, that we as a council voted not to accept the recommendation of the DPW, does yes. that necessarily mean that we're voting to take center court? I don't, I don't think that that necessarily follows from our having to vote not to accept question. the initial recommendation. So that's, that was my ongoing question with this piece, just what the procedure is. Okay, so a question like that, one thing um, you could also do is call directly, again, as you've already done, and call the mayor or even call Ned Huntley and ask what the process is. I think maybe the solicitor that. might need to look into yeah. it as well. Being our clerk, do you have any, you, you've been involved in these things. Do you have any thoughts on the well, process here? My, my understanding from the last meeting that took place, I mean, we're, this is back in April, so some time has passed um, where this committee has met. But um, Ned Huntley indicated that he had um, given the order and they, they were working on drawing up plans for the, um, the center court uh, taking. So it was his understanding, I think at the time, that um, you know the, the city council wanted to move forward with that and that it would eventually go back to council once the order of taking had been done and the, the plans um, had been worked up as well. Um, but I think that there were some out, you know, some unanswered questions about well, what does that process actually look like, um, and you know, who is going to be taking the reins on that? So, um, 
in my recommendations, I think we need to either, maybe we have Ned, I don't think it necessarily is a city solicitor so I can call, but maybe we should invite um, Ned or, would this be Rich Parcelletti who would be the person who would take charge of this? Do you know that? No, I think it would be the director. It would be the director. Maybe for our next meeting, mm -hmm. we should um, request Ned's presence here because I think we need his expertise. Unless I certainly still will call and make sure and if it's a very simple answer, I'll get it back to you and we'll see. I actually did have this kind of conversation with um, Director Huntley and the mayor, and I just have to look back at it. Unfortunately, I don't have my laptop with me to yeah. verify today, so um, it might be useful for us, and even just to get an update about what's happening okay. with their, with the UPW's work around it, um, it'd be good to have Director Huntley here. Okay. Thank you. So, is How did we get to DPW if it hadn't gotten out of committee? What's that? How did we get to city council if it hadn't gotten out of committee? Um, because we. I'm just curious. It's not necessarily. It didn't. It, it didn't need the vote of this committee in order. Some things do not need the vote of this committee in order to go. They were voting on a number of street issues. Well, my it, recollection. It part of the, the was it part of the 30 streets that got voted in and to be accepted as Robert? Streets? It came to the council as a recommendation that we not accept it, so we not do the taking. So then it went back, and when we decided to not make that recommendation, or accept that recommendation, it had to go back to the DPW, so that's why it's there. It's not, this is more just informational within mm. this committee, it's not like that. Just, just curious, I don't <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I don't did we vote? We, uh, when, this committee has reconstituted uh, itself just since January. Is that correct? I don't remember, but my memory is not good, on whether we voted on all of the various street in the other committee, in the joint. So those those didn't come to the committee. Those went straight to the council. Um, so the former committee, which was the joint city council and public works committee, did not specifically did not look at the at the individual street things or the recommendations. So I think that it kind of followed that same pattern. Didn't they didn't care about our recommendation or not. Okay, so we'll have we'll continue to follow up on this. Okay. So let's move, if it's okay as you're requesting, it's fine with me to move the downtown Florence beautification committee. <laughs> To, I don't know how I got that name. <laughs> we'll, we'll move the beautification to uh, So may, maybe I can just introduce this a sure, little bit. Sure, that'd be great. And, Please. Um, and let you guys know what is going on here. So somebody in Ward 7 contacted me, Betsy, and she'll hey, introduce Betsy. herself in a minute, um, saying that she was interested in addressing some of the things that she had kind of identified in downtown Florence as um, needing a little bit of attention. There were dead and dying trees. One of them has been removed since yeah, we met that. a week and a half ago. Um, and just wants to do kind of a civic volunteer kind of project to do some beautification. So I told her I thought it was a great idea, but that I would hook her up with the Florence uh, Civic and Business Association. Um, she had some ideas that she'll tell us all about, about who else to contact. Um, in the meantime, completely coincidentally, another Ward 7 resident contacted me saying, I'm concerned about the state of the trees and um, kind of the lack of uh, any kind of beautification of downtown Florence, completely coincidentally, three or four days after Betsy and I met. So I hooked them up as well. And so um, I put this here because I know that the Department of Public Works needs to be involved. I'm glad to see that Robert is here from the Florence Civic and Business Association, um, just so that we can have a little bit of a discussion um, again, it's unfortunate that Director Huntley isn't here because I think that he or Mr. Lorela could be very you know, useful to this discussion. I don't know if you got responses to the emails that you sent to them, but um, it's just an opportunity for us to hear a little bit about what um, Ms. Alden has in mind and um, you know, where, where this might go and also, of course, to hear from, the, from Robert um, representing, I guess, the Florence Civic and Business Association. Great. Good. So, I'm, my name is Betsy Alden. I live in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Either you can stand at the podium or you can sit with us. Or. If you want to sit with us. Well, we're trying um, to, we want to get you on camera yeah. so that um, if you can either 
bring a chair forward here, stand or you at the can, podium. Or you can take it. Oh, y'all wouldn't hear your presentation first. <laughs> <laughs> we should have put the chair up there, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Um, Just turn the sight line of the camera. Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm Betsy Allman, I live at 25 Sterling Road in Florence, um, right near JFK Middle School. And I'm an avid walker around Florence. And I've lived in Amherst and Hadley as well and done some projects particularly in Hadley, but um, I, I just had noticed how some of the downtown was looking a little disheveled. And if you walked around and you saw like in front of the post office, there was the dead tree and weeds and these little, look like public spots. They're like, they're like three feet by three feet or four feet by four feet. And I just thought, wouldn't it be nice if we could do some, some better trees the trees that are there uh, around the four corners of Florence don't really look like they're dying. I'm not sure of what one did die, as you, as you noted. Um, and <clears throat> so I am an avid gardener, and I, I just thought it would be a, a nice project that, that I could perhaps do with whomever. I don't care. I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, the idea of the beautification committee came from looking at what other towns and cities do uh, in this regard. And there's certain things in Florence that I think would be very nice to do, like doing a, a garden in front of JFK Middle School, uh, right where the sign is. There's nothing really there. And um, there's a cemetery area at Spring Grove that I'd love to do a, a woodland garden near some folks who are indigent, who don't have stones down there. So there's a variety of things. It's just that the, the center of Florence, we have that new building going in, looks I mean, very nice, and I just thought it would be time to spruce up the village a little bit, and obviously in concert with whomever. It, it doesn't, I'm not looking to, I'm just looking for some pretty nice things to go on there. I also just want to add to the list of folks that we kind of made connections yes. with that we also uh, connected with Lily Lombard. Yes. I, I haven't been in touch with her yet. No. She might still be out of the country. I know she okay. was on a, she was abroad exactly. as the new chair of the, uh, the newly restored uh, tree committee. Yes. I thought she would be an important person to have as part of that discussion as well. Great. And that means that Rich Marcelletti, who's the tree warden for the okay. city from DPW, would right. also be involved via the tree Right. And I missed the answer. Um, Lisa gave you um, some contacts. And did you get any responses? I didn't see whether you said yes or no to responses to. Did you write to Ned Huntley and others? No, no. I have done. Oh. I really haven't done anything other than um, respond to the gentleman Eric Howard. Who, he and I are going to get together Friday morning just to walk around and see what he's doing. He's but, the board yes, but I haven't formally done anything because I didn't know if it was okay to do anything or what the process is and working with the, the business and civic association and I don't want to step on any toes I just want to see if this might be a nice thing to do. You can start pulling the seat out of those trees. Well, I but can. But you're old anytime you're, in, and you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. It yes. sounds like your counselor sent you in a good direction. Yes. Um, trying to kind of, I'm not sure what, what role, beyond it's great to know about this, that this committee can play. Um, well, it I, is. I, again, it's kind of, um, it's unfortunate our new configuration of this committee because without Director Huntley here or the city engineer, Jim Lorla, who would probably be involved in this, maybe Rich Parcelletti, who's the superintendent yeah. of streets, those are all folks that kind of, um, have some sense of a map of the city and what kinds of projects go on. And as I said, Rich Parcelletti is also the tree warden. Um, so those are people that can kind of give us a little bit of insight into if the question what is whether we, we, you know, I think your idea of first making those contacts and seeing, because it may be that we don't even have a role to play except to be cheerleaders here. So I would suggest to making perhaps some of those contacts um, with Ned Huntley or with Rich Parcelletti, with Lily Lombard, you already are making those contacts with right. others who might be interested. And but let me just say, yeah. is that city property? Is Are those sidewalks city property? Okay, so we would need to go through the city in order to, the trees would have to be selected by the city, they'd have to be planted by DPW, 
I mean, we could do our for, own for a little bit of a recap on this. If it's the tree that I think you're talking about, though, directly in front of the post office, yeah, that already has been replaced. It has. That's why it's you, small. Why don't you yeah. come forward too, so that we on, have you in and you just kind of give your take on yeah. this as an idea because you're so involved in the center of Florence. Well, I, we actually did. <laughs> The biggest uh, problem we have with all these great ideas is public resources, yeah. which is individuals, Pe people to actually do the work. Um, like um, we do, the, the Civic Association does the, the planning of the fountain that's on uh, Kulichowski. It's Kulichowski Park, I can't get that one And um, you know, just gets a bit of water that regularly, so that yeah. it doesn't dry out. It's, yeah. it's a big deal. So I mean, these, you have these great ambitious, ambitious plans, but then there's the follow-up work right. has to be done. Too. Right. Um, and I'm concerned about those trees too. Strangely enough, I pull out of my street, and I, as I pointed out in my email, the two maples where we put the uh, bus stop, which was a nice shady spot to put the bus stop, under those two maples that I think probably belong to Valley Medical, not to the city, mm -hmm. have died. Yeah. And you mentioned something about trees, and as I'm driving to work, I realized that all the red maples yeah. on, um, whether it's uh, starvation for, for water de deprivation or there's actually some sort of parasite. But I didn't notice it initially because those trees are sometimes late blooming anyhow, but they yeah, actually yeah. have a lot of the tops have to have yeah. And those trees have been there for oh, probably close to 40 years. Yeah. So. They all look, the one, for some odd reason, the ones along the street, North Maple and Elm, they're all dying. They look like they're dying. Or they just don't look like they are. Well, they also may, they may have outgrown their uh, environments. Okay. They don't get urban trees don't get a whole lot of water. Yeah. That's other thing too. If you can get stewards to uh, oh, well, even water the trees that are so that, would, that would certainly be as you recommended something I would contact Lily Lombard and the tree committee because that would certainly be in their purview and they yeah. could maybe raise it up to a high priority for them to take a look, get an answer, okay. have Rich yeah. take a look and say what is it? Is it the light from the tree? Is it they're not being maybe so trees don't the answer. go there. Maybe, maybe they don't. Maybe they're not the right trees for yeah, that place. Yeah. But that would be. Okay. They should have, and Rich should have that kind of expertise, and certainly some of the members of the tree committee have okay. that kind of expertise. Okay. The other thing that you had talked to me about, Betsy, was um, maybe being in touch with some of the businesses downtown, and that's mm -hmm. something that you know I think it's important to be yeah. and to do in concert with. Um, right. the business civic and business association right. um, to see if they wanted to donate right. some money some right. things maybe some services maybe the gardening services that yeah. they use could stretch a little beyond foreign savings bank yeah. Yeah. Um, purview and so I think that that is something to consider and for you two to talk about mm -hmm. the city as well because mm -hmm. um, I think that could be a whole added component and also to have the the different businesses kind of invested in the beautification of the center of Florence. I do think that there are citizens out there in Florence who would like to be involved in this. So I think the manpower part of it could be solved if we could just get organized, whether it's a as a subgroup under your group or whatever. I you know it doesn't matter to me. I just I think there are people out there, you know, who would be interested in volunteers and to make to make whatever we do be as labor unintensive as possible so that we, we plant things that are more natural to the, to the environment here in New England and so on and so forth so um, so that's really what the Florence Beautification Committee agenda item was is um, and I'm not sure where to go next other than Lily for trees Robert and I can talk about. There's been, there's been two other planting pro projects that have happened in Florence. One was spearheaded by pretty much Mr. Shea, who owns Doe's Package Store, and somebody who, uh, what's uh, what's her name? Uh, it was a woman that did planting. She did pot, potted plants, and it got just to a woman. Okay. Her name. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, She's a, she's a massage there. therapist, yes. yes. Um, and, and, oh, does she live on Oak Street? No, she lives, she lives right there. upstairs from Birds and in that block right there. Okay. And um, she acted that for, for a long time. She did um, pilot plants around uh, that, bird, that parts of the block, and it was great, but it was the same thing as a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And previous to that, there was a planting committee 
some sorts that was spearheaded by um, Casey and where they, um, the, that we uh, they sponsored yes. flower, flower, flower pots throughout downtown London. Those might have included downtown London, yeah, too. That was before the chamber took yeah. over. So, okay. You are the, the counselor from downtown. No, I'm not actually. Not. David Murphy is. Yeah, so uh, what well, I was going to say. You are well, part of downtown. You come, you come all the way to Maple to um, Right up to the Maple Civic Street. Center, and I don't even go that far. You don't go to Maple it's, Street anymore? No, it's, that's Ward 5. It, it's with the reconfiguration, the oh. redistricting. It's not. She did so I only do one side of, um, of North through. Maple, and not North Maple, Main Street, and then part of the other side of Main Street, but where it's. Okay, now we'll fault you for your uninvolvement. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> actually, yes. Yeah, I really thought you came all Because it actually follows Street. up what I was going to say, which is I mean, I've had experience of this with different parts in my ward. Your point person is really, would probably be your, your counselor, who would hopefully help you, as you have already helped, connect people up, direct you to the right places to go, and help you to do that. And it's, so if it's David Murphy, then I would get hold of David Murphy as well. And um, He was included on that. Yes, yes David asked. Murphy was, and I actually, I sprayed it even even larger to include um, the director of Book Park, John. Yes, you did. John. Yeah. Um, exactly. Florence Savings Bank, Mark Kern is the marketing director of Florence Savings yeah. Bank. She was actually one of the few that wrote back to me. She wanted to know why. She Included. So, and I said I want to keep on the loop because I also want to tell you that I did also tell you that they do go a little beyond by doing both those. They do both the gardens on the gateway signs, Florence, the one in front of them, okay. the one in Kluczkowski Park, and the one on Trinity Road Park. So my suggestion would be, I would talk to David Murphy, okay. and I would ask him if he could have a meeting rather than at this meeting, which is a more formal setup, but a more informal meeting. Pull all of you guys together. Okay. Invite somebody from DPW who's right, okay. and that would be if I was the counselor in the ward. That would be what I would suggest and do. And pull people okay. together. Um, we certainly are here more as a kind of as a city council group. That if something comes forward and you might need, there might be some kind of change in an ordinance. There might be something else that you would need from a larger group. But that would be where I would go, because we're not kind of set up to help you guys do that organizational piece, which I think would be important. Okay. So and I'm this, happy this, to continue there to you go. play a role, too. Okay. Then it won't fault you anymore at all. Extra credit. <laughs> that's now you get, that, that's, now you get that's not what credit. I meant. <laughs> Sometimes my words come out mixed. But I, I meant that, that, that I th really thought that you were one of the, one of the downtown Maybe that's the most important part of this discussion. <laughs> Clear. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you for taking And then hopefully the down the road we'll have a, yeah, taking the initiative and then down the road maybe when some of this, we'll have you come back in just to kind of give a presentation. I was hoping you were going to complain about the crack, the crack sidewalks too and the, the horrible asphalt repairs in front of like the, the soft serve place, which is, I think, the Problems yeah. too much salt actually. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, it is now. That's the, that's the kind of issue too. That after you, if you were to talk to them and you don't, you, we could come back and we'll talk specifically on that. Okay. So is this a spin out? Is this is from when the, the reorganization of all committees? Was, yes. Like the the BPW changing its role. It used so to be the Joint um, City Council BPW Commission. Was it a commission? I Committee. think it was. Was I think we committee? were committee. And yeah. with the reorganization, it's just the um, Public Works Committee, right. and we no longer have the BPW folks to meet with, and the, the staff from DPW doesn't come to the meeting unless we request it at this point. They used to come mandatorily to those meetings. And some of us will like a lot of the reorganization, but we don't particularly like that piece. This one so, doesn't, yeah, this one doesn't seem like it kind of fell through no, the cracks. We, yeah. uh, we felt, I was on that committee for years and thought it was a great committee and I, I miss it. And I miss the fact that, for example, we didn't normally, would back then we would have had Jim Lorelei here, we would have had Ned Huntley here, we would have been meeting over at the DPW building and we could have grabbed Rich Parcelletti. So I, I miss the old story. Well, I was trying to figure it out. I was, I was worried that I was told the wrong place because I think because there was nobody here. I was like, maybe, maybe it's supposed to be at the, at the DPW. But thank you for your time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you both. So we'll do, now this is going to be the last yes. agenda item.
which is the request for an update on the solar array at uh, Glendale Landfill. Is this why you came, or did you want to? Because I'm going to give some update on it if, you, if you'd like. No, I didn't come with any okay. message to the Lord. So the update is a broader, um, a broader update about what's happening with, I'm going to call it, and these may not be the correct term, freestanding large solar arrays in the western part of Massachusetts. So, and, and stop me if, this, if you both heard this, the whole thing of what's going on, just to, because I think this is very important, not just for us, not just for the landfill, but it's very important for uh, alternative energy, and it's very important for our whole efforts around climate change in the entire state of Massachusetts. So as you know, Northampton has been a leader, not just in the state, but almost nationally known for its solar per capita, the amount of solar we have here. It's been pretty amazing. And that is mostly has been rooftop solar. So when legis and that will continue. That's not being affected by some recent changes. So when the legislation a number of years ago came through in terms of it, and projecting about solar and in that legislation requiring the utility companies, each of the various utility companies in the state, had a certain amount of solar energy that they had to buy. That continues on all of the rooftop dwellings. So part of that legislation said, if the building itself, the structure itself, was using the electricity, then there's, I don't know if it's unlimited, there's some point at which, but that's not being affected in the legislation. What they did say in that legislation was there was a percentage that the utility company had that they needed to buy that was produced by these freestanding units. Now when this was through, as I look back and talk to Peter Cook, you know, nobody thought, say, eight, 10 years ago, that solar would take off like it did in Massachusetts and also throughout the country. People, it was way too expensive, people thought. So they had this figure of 20%. So it was basically saying, and I'm oversimplifying, so don't quote me on this, but I think the legislation basically said, you as the utility company, each of these various utility companies in different parts of the state, you must buy from these freestanding units 20% of your electricity, up to 20%. You need to buy solar. Well, we, and we're the only ones to do this, it's in this part of the state where we have now, and everybody is flabbergasted going, oh my god, nobody projected. They said 20% never going to happen. You know, Remember back when Dick Cheney was talking about, you'll never get more than 2%. I wrote a quote from him. You'll never get nationwide more than 2% in solar in any country. Right? Germany now is getting, what, 65%. So it happened in a way that's great. Unfortunately, the legislation says the utility company now doesn't have to buy from our utility, the ones who provide us electricity, they've reached their max. So they're not guaranteeing they will buy any electricity in western Massachusetts in the areas they cover. And you have not only the landfill, but you have multiple projects that were ready to go. On the landfill, for example, as Mike, you probably know, the RFP was all written and sent out and they actually started having bids coming in. There still are bids coming in. I mean, they're looking at them. I mean, and they were great bids because the price has gone way down on panels, continues to. But unfortunately, until something happens, either through some agreement that the governor is supposedly the last, I talked to Peter Cocut. let me back up. When I first talked to Peter Cocut and Stan Rosenberg, Bill and I had discussions with them separately. Neither of them were very optimistic that anything was gonna happen. I mean, it was, it was kind of a tragedy. You know, here are you guys, we've been talking about the solar array on the landfill, it was kind of one of the positive things of closing the landfill environmentally. And it kind of felt like this is gonna just, you know, we were telling them it's not gonna happen. In addition, and that's a very, I forgot how many acres that, that array is, but it's a good size array, and there are three or four others I know about which are even larger in this part of the state. I mean, it, it's really a shame. Paul, why is it, a, why can't the, any excess electricity be um, shared? Why can't we aggregate it and share it 
with other nonprofits okay. or so, organizations. Okay, so let me say, so I'll get to that. It's very, this is very complex stuff. So on the Energy Commission, we, I mean, we spent a lot of hours when Chris Mason goes, it's very intricate, but I'll try and explain it as best I can. So they were very uh, pessimistic two months ago about the hope of any of these things, that the legislature, partially because the governor's big push is to bring in hydro. We have a whole thing happening now with the pipeline and natural gas, replacing electric output, uh, probably even, these all tie in together. Probably when Yankee nuclear is converted, it'll be converted to natural gas, uh, maybe even made into a bigger plant. Um, you also have competing forces that the wind folks from the eastern part of the state are competing to get the utility companies to buy that alternative source of energy. I mean, it's unfortunate that we're kind of fighting about this. And there isn't a comprehensive overview, which would have to be either come from the legislature or the governor to say, let's really increase our amount of alternative energy. Yeah, let's bring the hydro down. Yeah, let's have solar. Yeah, let's have wind power. That would seem like the logical thing to do. Let's pass new legislation requiring all of the utilities or an aggregate, a new bill that says, wait a minute, let's just make it an aggregate. It would seem to be. At that point, both Peter and, and Stan just said, yeah, that may be great, but you know, it ain't gonna happen in the next 20 years. Not like that. However, when I spoke to Peter two or three weeks ago, he was more optimistic. And the reason, since speaking to some folks at Northeast Solar and other places, the reason there's a little more hope is that, number one, I think it's because there's a big industry in solar. It's way bigger than just little places like Northeast Solar. There are some very big corporate interests now, and we can not like that in some ways, because I like having local businesses like Northeast bringing into the local economy. But what happens is when you have a big corporation or you have somebody like Goldman Sachs putting a lot of money into solar projects in the state, I'm not sure they're the ones here, but there's somebody like that, that you have a little bit of clout. And you have lobbyists fighting to say, I forgot the number, I think there are like 18,000 people working in solar in Massachusetts. There's a lot of people involved. So Peter said he thinks the governor is going to offer some kind of plan that he's talking with the utility companies right now, and they're trying to come up with some kind of plan. To defend the utility companies just a little bit, one of the things that when the legislation went through, one of the things we're asking the utility company to do is we're saying, we'll build this almost like another power plant out in the landfill. And we're going to use your infrastructure that you paid for, which is the utility company. And so there may be, and there are these SRECs, these socially responsible energy credits, that you're going to even have to give so that people get benefit because you're doing a socially good thing by producing this alternative energy, you're going to actually have to pay people a little bit to do that, and they're going to use all of your infrastructure. And the utility companies are saying, we don't think it's fair that we should have to pay this anymore. That was an incentive to get solar moving. And Peter Koch had even we talked about it. We said, you know what? It actually served that purpose. Solar is certainly smart. Is it ready to kind of be live on its own without the incentives? Questionable. I wish they would continue. But Peter said one thing that may happen is what you'd see is either the SRX are going to go away, or you'll have or and or also instead of getting money, maybe there's going to be some kind of percentage or fee, hopefully very low, to compensate the utility companies for the use of their infrastructure. What we hope doesn't happen are like some of the very conservative Midwesterns. Oklahoma, I think, passed this. This is kind of a Koch brothers involvement. What they're doing is they're getting bills passed where if you put up solar, you have to pay a huge amount. Okay, we put up this infrastructure over the last 80, 100 years, and we're going to charge you this enormous amount. It's actually making, so it's the opposite of SREX. We're saying we're going to make it almost prohibitively expensive for you to do solar. That's not going to happen here. So a little more optimism. 
but probably won't have the SREX. When it comes up to the more logical thing, which is why don't they aggregate it? And we talk about that in the Energy Commission. An even bigger question is why do we have a comprehensive energy plan that involves both the electric companies who are simultaneously saying, we're not going to let you build these big solar arrays, freestanding solar arrays. We're going to stop those, right? Almost because we got enough electricity. We don't want to buy it from you. We're not going to do that. And you have the gas company who are saying, well, one of the reasons we need a new pipeline in this part of the state, one of the reasons we need to do that is we're doing all this conversion of electric utilities who use coal, and we're changing them over to natural gas. And Yankee Pilgrim is going from nuclear to natural gas, so we need a much more natural gas to produce more electricity. It's really getting all of these folks to start having a conversation, and we don't have that in the state. So maybe this summer there would be some kind of something that comes together, probably without the SREC, says Peter, that hopefully by the fall these projects could then start again. That's so the SREX would be taken away from um, homeowners and people that have already installed solar? Like me. Like me? <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Interesting. Yeah, it's possible. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Yeah, just one Thanks last so thing much. on the SREX piece. I installed my unit like four years ago. My next door neighbor, two years later, installed. The same exact unit, same exact sign, same company did it. And he spent 40% less. So there's part of this that the cost of it has come down enough. That's what is being argued that do we really need the SREX? And it is, I think it's a legitimate argument. probably had more incentives than he did when he did it, I would bet. No? Because we installed ours in 2003 and we had 50% of the cost of coverage. Oh, you were, yeah, you got, we were oh, you were, you were a pioneer. Yeah. Oh God, 2003. There wasn't even a sun. It was the sun here. <laughs> All right. So, any additions to that, or questions? That no, that's very, uh, very cogent explanation. We're Thank certainly you. working on it in the Energy Commission. It's coming up all the time. It is this whole way that that this is working of net metering. It, it's incredibly complex. Um, the legislation is incredibly complex. Politics behind a fascinating industry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Move to adjourn? Yeah. I second that. Let's adjourn. Mike, thanks for. Coming.